The American government does not trust Chinese professors right now. Let's talk about it. Yeah, you know, I used to be the favorite professor in the whole department. The faculty loved me. Then the China Initiative came along. Everybody looking at me funny. We got to talk about this article, Andrew, from the University of Michigan titled, U.S. Universities Secretly Turn Their Back on Chinese Professors Under the Department of Justice's China Initiative. Guys, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smile Last Sauce at SmileLastSauce.com. It is restocking soon. Your pre-orders is out right now. Andrew, the China Initiative, Andrew, sounds like something that should be good. It sounds like something that should be improving trade relations, bilateral talks, but in fact, it was, Andrew, to prevent Professor Tier Espionage. It was uh, started in 2018, heavily enforced between 2019 and 2022. I heard things have chilled out, but in the middle of it, Andrew, people said that a lot of people that didn't do anything got kicked out of America or were forced to resign from their jobs. Mm, so we're going to talk about this, try to break it down. We'll give you some of the uh, comments section as well. Um, David, so after looking over the basics of the China Initiative, which is basically what, coming down hard on Chinese professors, right? Chinese professors being that they're from China, probably born and raised. They went to college there. They come over here as professors, as academics, are involved in maybe biology, the sciences, possibly engineering, right? To keep an extra close eye on these guys and find out if they're spies, if they're sharing uh, sh uh, trade secrets with China or information right. with Chinese universities. And by the way, guys, I don't know if you guys know how much Chinese love school and academics and being a scholar, but there are like thousands of like visiting professors <laughs> and many, many, many more thousands of students. Yes, have there been a few high profile cases uh, that made it look bad, that were like the people were guilty? Yes, but the problem is everybody got blanketed and some of the people who were super not guilty still got kicked out or were forced to retire early or resign. And uh, for example, Andrew, one guy named uh, Cheng Gong or Gang Chen was a MIT mechanical engineering professor and he was arrested on hiding of his links to China. Basically, he didn't do anything, but he might have gotten a few awards or honorees or grants when he was like in China that he didn't declare. They arrested him in 2021, but he said, you know, I'm the lucky one because I had support from MIT because MIT, Andrew, basically had his back, but not every professor at every university had the university fight on their behalf. Mm. So some of them just had to give it up. And I just think like this, man. It's really unfortunate. These are just like the times that we're in right now, right? It's like a, I don't want to say, Andrew, it's an outright cold war between America and China right now, but it's definitely a pretty cool war. I, like yeah, it's I, more towards cold. I, I, I would, it feels like a cold war. But maybe not on the level that the Cold War was at, you know, with the Soviets. Right. How about a like, slightly Cold War? Where the missiles were pointed at each other and then, like, they were about to press the button. It's it's not that cold. It's a brisk breeze war. Yeah, it's definitely a, a windy war. And I feel like there's bad apples everywhere, and it's so unfortunate because when you don't really understand something, like, America doesn't really understand China, especially the American government doesn't really understand China. You know what I noticed, Andrew? American business people understand way, China way better than the American government does. That's interesting. Why do you say that, David? Why do you think business people are having an easier time understanding the nuances than the government? Because, first of all, in America, the business sector attracts higher tier talent. And also, they want to continue doing business with China, so they have to understand the nuances, the co pros, the cons, and the gray zones way more than like these old boomers in the government that are just like, China's evil. It is trying to displace the West at the top of the global hierarchy. You know what I mean? Where I, I see where they're coming from too, but it's like way more nuanced than that, even though that's not like, I guess the come a thousand percent wrong thought. It's just super unnuanced. Right. I think in the business world, there's been like a lot of sharing and so much collaboration. Like no matter what the government says about China, the business people are working with China like all day long. Right. <laughs> like even if we go to a hot war, like hypothetically, David, this is, and I don't think this is actually close to happening, but let's say there are missiles firing across the waters and there are, Chinese military and American military dying on both sides, there will still be trade with China. I believe it. Like they won't right. cut off complete <laughs> trade. There will still be Bezos like- Bezos is gonna be like, well, I, I can't shut down Amazon. Yeah, Wish, Sheen, you're still gonna be buying Sheen jackets. You're still gonna be buying Timu stuff. Like, I don't know, that's what I think. 
Yeah, it's just a really weird situation where basically, like, the people, it's like, obviously, the U.S. government absolutely should do its due diligence, catch the people who are doing wrong things, question people who are on the fence and scare them into doing the right thing, and then leave the people who are doing the right thing completely alone, right? Right. But, but it's like, there's no apparatus to, like, accurately assess anybody. Yeah. So everybody just gets blanketed. Yeah. And it, it kind of reminds me of the way people, Andrew, perceived police, like, you know how everybody's like, all police are corrupt and racist, but I was like, well, isn't it probably only a fraction of them? Or all this group of people are really bad. Well, isn't it a fraction of them? Or um, all Republicans are racist. All Democrats hate structures in society. These are like stereotypes that people would use on the other side to villainize that side. But it's not true even for anywhere close to a majority of that group of people. Exactly. David, do you think the China initiative back in 2018, they came down extra hard and ruined and uh, un wrongfully ruined some careers because they were just trying to come down so hard and scare other Chinese professors? Like now in 2024, do you think other Chinese professors that are trying to come over to work in America are more weary and they're like, oh shit, like I got to have all my ducks in place because I don't want the government to think that I'm I'm like working for the Chinese government. I, I think depending on what level you are, you just don't even go back to China anymore. I think mm. that depending on what level you're interfacing with sensitive material or whatever, you just go, yo, this is not worth it. You know, I love all the, you know, the, you can get the guo kui now here in America, but, you know, even in Wisconsin, but the local sh Chinese food street, I, I just yeah. can't go back for the guo kui anymore. But do you think that that as a, is a favorable outcome for the U.S. government in this sense? Like they would rather have... Chinese professors come here and just stay here rather yeah, than go back and I forth. I do think so. I do think so. I think that that is the sacrifice that they're going to have to make uh, for their lifestyle or whatever just under the current environment. And by the way, guys, I'm not saying I don't understand where the U.S. government is coming from. I'm just saying that the U.S. government is run by a lot of boomers who see it one-sided. They don't build the right apparatus, so then they blanket everybody because they can't build the system to actually suss out the nuances. Right, because like... For some of these professors, there was just no evidence, you know? Right, right, right. For a couple of them, there was. I, I read some cases, you know, somebody was got caught at the airport trying to send 21 vials of biological research to China. That guy got detained. Right. And will go to jail. And he should. And, and he should go to and jail. He should go to should, jail. And he should go to jail for a long time, too, to be honest, because he violated or whoever violated. And I'm saying this. It just feels like anything or anybody who's Chinese in the West right now, they're guilty before proven innocent. Mm. And everybody's cool with it. And for me, I think that that's really unfortunate. I think that that's just true in any sort of politicized field. Maybe the one field where I don't see it as much, but even you see it with TikTok and stuff like that, is like tech. Mm. I think you see it the least in tech. Because that's why the politicians go against tech, because the politicians have the least stranglehold on like the new world industries. But the old world industries, whether that's academia, a lot of government funding involved, and like uh, obviously politics, media, hyper-politicized right now. Mm. And, and that's just what I feel like. And I just feel like, uh, so there was a bunch of comments, Andrew, saying this guy was like, yeah, I just cannot help but feel very disaffected. I saw so many professors and graduate students around me get sent back and they cannot finish their PhD program. This made me feel like America hates me. And uh, you know what's so interesting about it, Andrew, is you can read all these think pieces from uh, Muslim Americans after 9-11, um, black Americans just throughout history. There's so many conflicting feelings, but it's like, for me, I would tell people that it's just like, man, it's just such a complicated time right now because people are not like seeing the nuance in each other. And then they feel like China cheated first with stealing IP to come up as a country, but then China's going to look at the opium wars and all the other stuff and how it was the factory, world's factory for a while. So you know what I mean? Like, I'm just saying it's so funny because if you really study it, it's just so complicated and layered. No, most people like... I don't know, like 75 to 85 percent of Americans just mm -hmm. don't want to do it. So they just get a blanket it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just think that that's a really unfortunate time right now. And, um, you know, a lot of people were talking about how come Germans and Russians never got treated that same way because they like they could pass as white in America. Mm -hmm. I do remember at one point Russians were treated a little bit more like that, though, when I was growing up. Yeah. Like, and I would say, like, anecdotally speaking, from a cultural sense, white people see a lot of Russian people as outsiders of the white race, although visually they can pass, but they kind of like make fun of 
Russians. Right. If say. Vladimir pulls up in the M3, the older ME46 with the leather jacket on, smoking a cigarette, white yeah. people are like, oh, we check but out. Also, the guys, there's not even the number of Russian scientists in America as there are Chinese professors. Like, Chinese scientists from China, there's thousands in America. Like, thousands of professors, academics, scientists, if researchers. If you're watching this video, you've probably had a Chinese professor or TA guaranteed because no. academia and like scholarliness and scholastics. It's like, you have to understand in the Chinese culture is so revered and valued yeah. as a profession. Like yeah. it's like the top two. No, you know I mean, I to personally to rich within our extended family and our friends and family. I have friends whose parents are literally Chinese professors and scientists. So I know like 20. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that's a lot. Um, somebody said, why is a baby civilization so scared of the ascension of a much older civilization? This was from a Chinese guy. Oh, what are you watching? Three body problem? Yeah. Huh? But then a white guy came through and said, well, if you look at Anglo civilization as a somewhat unbroken connection to Greek civilization, even though the language is different, then technically it's just as old. If you count Anglo civilization being linked to the Romans, being linked to the Greeks. And then he said, uh, plus the, only the last 100 or 150 years of history really matter anyway. This is like his theory on uh, civilizations. And of course, this turns into a whole civilization battle that geeks and nerds on Reddit love to fucking get, you know, engage in. And then um, ultimately, somebody just said, as a Chinese American myself, it's a very gray zone. It's just a shame that there has to be collective punishment on the wrong actions of a few. Mm. Um, Ultimately, I'll say this, man. Everybody has a different threshold of where they're willing to go, Andrew. When people dig for oil in America, some people want to dig in sacred Indian burial grounds. Some people don't. Some people want to trawl the ocean for precious metals, but they don't. some whales are going to get killed or dolphins are going to get killed in that process. You know, like everybody has a different threshold for like, well, we got to keep this country safe. So if a few people got to retire or get out of the country and they were good guys, so be it. You know what I mean? Like everybody has different things they're willing to like sacrifice or like overhead or collateral damage. And I just wish that, especially like as much as like America is going to do, you know, be frenemies with China moving forward. You need more people in infrastructure positions that actually understand what's going on because the business people, they always see the nuance, but the government people are more like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but they're, they're challenging the West. And I'm like, Hey guys, listen, I'm not saying there's nothing to that. But it's way more layered and way more intellectual than that. And um, yeah, I just think as a Chinese American, it's really interesting because everything regarding China sort of gets blown out of proportion and you can't help but feel it on a slight micro level mm -hmm. trickle down. So I think that's really unfortunate. What I would say to Chinese Americans is just like, hey man, it's gonna be this way for the next couple decades, you know? And um, you gotta just, you can't just, you, you got to develop your own sense of what is the truth or what is not the truth or like even what you know and don't know. You just mm -hmm. cannot listen to the media. Right. I agree. So you guys let us know what you guys think down below about these stories. Obviously, there have been some Chinese spies since the initiative in 2018, a couple cases. But uh, I, I think there's definitely a lot of stories of Chinese professors' lives and careers being ruined wrongfully. Uh, but we don't hear about them. They don't get a lot of press and they're probably not going to get a national apology from the government. They're not going to, they got investigated and they got their lives torn apart. Uh, so. It's shoe yeah. one, Jed, just too bad for you. Just go back home and swallow it. Yeah. But you know what? That's, uh, I guess it's the government's, uh, they, they gotta, whatever. They're, I mean, they're, they're, they're beefing, they they're do. jostling. I'll tell you this, man. They are on the low post. They are not trying to kill each other, but they are elbowing each other in the ribs yeah. like, like the NBA playoffs in the 90s. All right, everybody. Uh, please let us know in the comments down below. Tell us what you think. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.